Hello again, I'm continuing with my series about sons and daughters of God. And today, sons of God carry their own cross. Now, one of the most important declarations and teachings of Christ was the fact that he was the bread of life. Listen to this from John chapter 6 in verses 35 to 38. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me shall never thirst. As I told you, even though you've seen me, you still don't believe. All the Father who gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will never reject. Now, this is the key verse. The last verse there, verse 38, he said this. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. That was Jesus's clear focus to do the will of the Father. Now this of course included healing the sick, chasing demons, choosing a team of disciples, but behind all the evangelistic activities he was being guided by the Holy Spirit. And even at his bar mitzvah at the age of 12, instead of returning to Nazareth with, his, uh, with Mary and uh, Joseph, he stayed in the temple in discussion with the rabbis. And when uh, Mary and Joseph came looking for him, he said, why is it you're looking for me? Don't you know, I must be about my father's business. It's Luke 2 verse 49. Jesus had a one track mind. He wanted to please the father. He knew he was the bread of life and he came to do his father's will. In John 5, 19, now this is, this is like a life scripture to Veronica and I. John 5, 19, this is what Jesus said. The son is able to do nothing of himself. Nothing means nothing. He's only able to do what he sees his father doing. For whatever the father does is what the son does in the same way. So Jesus' day-to-day choices of where to go, who to minister to, who to choose as his disciples, very easy, very easy choice. What he saw his father doing, he did the same. Now the Apostle Paul also was in the same mindset and he called himself a bond slave to Christ, Romans 1 verse 1. In his missionary journeys in AD 51, he didn't just go where he wanted to go, where he thought, oh, that'd be a good idea, let's go into Asia. No, the Holy Spirit forbade them to go into certain areas of Asia, Acts 16, 6, and instead he was guided to Philippi. Well, that's a good good thing. God's showing me to go to Philippi. Must be some good things about to happen. Hmm. What happened when he got to, uh, Ma- uh, to uh, Macedonia's chief city, Philippi? He met a slave girl there with a spirit of divination. Now, (laughs) this particular uh, slave girl was shouting after Paul and Silas to say, these are the servants of the Most High God. And Paul got fed up with it, cast the demon out of her, the spirit of divination. And in the riot, it was caused and stirred up by her masters, because she she divined things for money. Paul and Silas were thrown into prison. Well, here we do, God's will. We were led to Philippi and we get thrown into jail. Well, their reaction was not a bad one. It was a good one. They, they just responded to the situation. They said, well, this was Lord's will. We came here. We'll sing praises. And God started to undo the chains, break down the doors. The prison was open. And the, and the jailer was panicking. He was going to kill himself. And Paul and Silas said, don't kill yourself. We're okay, everybody's here, and the jailer and his family were saved and baptised and were the founding members of the church at Philippi. Remember you read in the Bible, Philippians, well, this was the founding members of the church. Now, Paul and Silas were not in control of their own circumstances. Their steps were directed by the Lord, Psalm 37, 23. Writing to the, another church at Galatia, Paul confirmed that his life was not his own. He said this in Galatians 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in this body, I live 
by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul realised it wasn't his life anymore. He was allowing Christ to live his life through Paul's flesh. So Paul put into practice what Christ has said he requires of a disciple. This is the requirement for the job. If you truly want to follow me, you must disown your life. You must be willing to take up your cross and experience the cross as your own, as you continually surrender to my ways. If you let go of your life in this way and for the gospel, you will experience true life. But if you choose to keep your life for yourself, you will lose what you have tried to keep. That's uh, Mark 8, 34 to 37 in the Passion Translation. So Paul followed the, those instructions. He was a disciple. He was a son of God. And he said uh, in his writings to the uh, church at Philippi, let this mindset be in you that was in Christ. So we're supposed to think and act this way. Again, let me recap. Children of God have not surrendered to Christ's lordship. They live natural, undisciplined lives, undiscipled lives, better way of putting it. They make their own decisions. They direct their own lives. They've got the steering wheel. Nobody else is going to take the steering wheel. And they trust in their prayer of salvation. But sons and daughters of God carry their cross. What do I mean by that? They constantly question themselves on John 5 19 do I see the father doing this now Jesus's clear words were to uh, the crowd and to his disciple not everyone who calls me Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father who is in heaven so doing the will of the father is essential absolutely essential to being sure that you're going to heaven. Don't deceive yourselves. Sons and daughters do the will of the Father. 